In this screencast, we're going to take a look at an example of a transfer function for a first order process in standard form. So we're going to take a look again at the thermal mixer example problem. And this thermal mixer is operating at steady state. And at time t equals zero, the inlet temperature makes a step change from 25 degrees C to 30 degrees C. So we're going to begin with the energy balance in deviation variable format and then develop a transfer function relating this temperature input, T1, and the outlet temperature, T, for the thermal mixer. So like I said, we're going to begin with the um, energy balance in deviation variable form. Deviation variable format. And we can rearrange this equation to also pull out some constants. So the right-hand side of this differential equation can also be expressed as F1 plus F2 over the mass of the tank times the quantity F1 over F1 plus F2 times T1 hat minus T hat. Now this differential equation is easily going to be put into standard form. So recall the standard form of first order, linear, non-homogeneous, ordinary differential equations. That would be tau p times dy dt plus y equals some constant kp times the forcing function or the input function u of t. So every first order, linear, non-homogeneous, ordinary differential equation can be put into this standard form and they will always look the same as each other. So we can take our energy balance and put it into this standard form. And so it will look like this. The mass over F1 plus F2 times the time derivative of T hat, or temperature hat, plus T hat is equal to F1 over F1 plus F2 times t1 hat, or our forcing function, or input function. Now because of the parallels, direct parallels, between the standard form that all first order, linear, non-homogeneous, ordinary differential equations take on, and the one that we have, we can directly see what our grouping is tau p, what grouping of constants represents tau p, and what grouping of constants represents kp. So therefore, we can rewrite this differential equation as tau p times the time derivative of, of temperature hat plus t hat equals kp times t1 hat. So now that we have the differential equation into this form, we're going to take a Laplace transform of that. Before we do so, let's go ahead and define our Laplace variables. So let capital T of S be defined as the Laplace transform of t hat as a function of time, etc. So therefore, taking a Laplace transform of this equation, now remember there are, it's already in deviation variable format, so we don't have to worry about the initial condition when we take the Laplace transform of the time derivative. So the Laplace transform of the equation would be tau p times s times capital T of s plus capital T of S is equal to KP times capital T1 of S. We can take this left-hand side and massage it into the form of tau P S plus one quantity times T of S. So having in that form, we can easily solve for T of S, or we can solve for the transfer function, which is defined as T of S over t1 of s. And what we get is we get kp over tau p s plus 1, which shouldn't be a surprise because this is the form of the, in standard form, of the first order transfer function. So all first order linear non-homogeneous ordinary differential equations, when they're put into standard form, take the Laplace transform, this is what you get out for the transfer function, right? So all of them look like this, right? So this is the the, because there is only one, the first order 
transfer function in standard form. Now again, we could have named our constant something else, right? So if this were an actuator equation that we were taking the Laplace transform of instead of the process, then it would be k actuator divided by tau actuator s plus 1. But it's just, that's what they're named, right? So anything that can be described by this first order linear non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation can be put, uh, uh, the, the transfer function is this. Okay, so last thing is let's describe in our own words what tau p and kp mean physically in this example. So tau p is the total mass divided by total mass flow rate. Okay, so that's not what it means physically, that's just how the grouping of constants went together. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing here for kp. kp, uh, the grouping of constants means the flow And it's not just the flow, it's the mass flow rate. So mass flow rate of the changing stream. And that's stream one. Divided by the total flow rate, mass flow rate going through the system. So given that these are the groupings of the constants that make up tau p and kp, what do these two constants mean physically in this example? And I'm going to let you guys think about that and answer it on your own.